Hey, Coach, thanks for joining us this week. Um, we'll get started just talking about Friday. The pink match, uh, it's obviously huge for the program. What does that mean to you personally? What does that mean to the whole West Virginia women's soccer program? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, the effort always goes to Nikki, too. I mean, she started, you know, raising money um, years ago. She had a family member that was affected by it, which made her uh, want to start this tradition of, of always giving back to as well and just remembering you know, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, we show up and we play a game every day, but there's bigger life factors outside of it, you know. So this is extremely important, I think, to our program. Um, we have current team players that have had family members affected by this unfortunate disease. Um, so it, I think it's more than, you know, we show up, we play for our families, um, you know, and obviously giving back to um, appreciating, you know, the little things of, of the factors that we do handle off the field a bit. So, but... Nikki's done a good job raising, you know, a lot of money. Um, the program has put a lot of time and effort doing fundraisers for it um, and just making sure that we understand that the value of what we are actually are playing for, um, you know, and sending that message. And I think the kids suit up not just, you know, to go out there and, and win games, but also um, realizing the bigger factors that is at stake, though, too, and why we do what we do to protect um, each other. Kevin Kinder, go ahead. Lisa, what is learning Zoom and connecting in different ways with people been like for you personally? You're kind of, you know, in the middle of that uh, you know, technology wave that you know, the older of us didn't grow up with that, but, you know, that's been, you know, kind of part of you. Did you take to that well? How's that been? You know what? I actually think that COVID, I, I always find the positive side of things and, and finding the time to do these things with our players actually, I think, help build relationships even further. Um, you know, kind of with, with some recruiting coming to a halt, which I do spend a lot of time, sometimes I don't get the time that I've been able to spend with our kids now. Um, I've been fortunate to have that time now. And I think getting to know your players a little bit more. I, I made a rule for myself and I told Nikki this, that every time I start a Zoom with a player, I, I designate 10 minutes to just talking about them, you know, making sure they're okay. You know, it's not, again, we're not here just to be soccer coaches. We're here to be good mentors and listen, you know, and I think these kids need people to listen to as well because it is a difficult time. So I think for me, I've used it as an opportunity to really develop my relationships even further with the kids because I definitely think it was hard times, but also um, the technology and the Zoom now, the Zoom life that we live, unfortunately, um, I think has been a positive thing because I do take time to reflect on, you know, truly getting to know the players and making sure they're okay and, and working on building those relationships with, with them and take their mind completely off soccer, you know, until and it's, most of it is business with soccer, but I always make sure we, we take that time to talk about, you know, just life and, and making sure they're okay with their schoolwork and as they've adjusted to a different lifestyle. Go ahead, Sam. Coach, you guys are facing Kansas this weekend, another ranked team. Um, their matches, they're, they seem to be very close. Every single one uh, win, I should say, has been 1-0. Oh, yeah. yes. what's, tough, what's tough about getting the ball past their defensive back? Ooh, defensive well, you hit it. That, that is the goal, you know. So that, that's the biggest thing. I mean, obviously, they play a different type of system. Um, they're very well coached. Um, they're very well organized. They play a five-back system. You know, so it's understanding how to break that down, you know, and as you, you mentioned, everything's been tight. They're not giving up a lot of goals. I think they might be third right now in the Big 12, I think, in shutouts. Um, you know, so they're not, they're not allowing teams to see the net, you know, so that, that's, some, that's something in their credit that we've been training this week, um, knowing going into their defensive mind scheme, schemes that they have. Um, but on the flip side, they're very dynamic and creative, and, and this is a team that, you know, you give them one chance, they, they have players that can find the back of the net, and that's our job to obviously eliminate that, you know. So, um, but they're coming off Big 12 championship last year, you know. So we got the defending Big 12 champs um, of the regular season of, 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 the, yep, of the tournament coming in, you know. So that's something that we're well aware of, um, and they are always up for a good battle and definitely not an easy opponent, um, and, you know, to obviously get past – um, so, but again, th this is a team that, you know, we have been training for and, and getting ready, but again, now knowing their creativity and their, how dynamic they are, um, you know, they do also have a back line that doesn't allow a lot of shots or, um, chances to score as well. Any 
Any other questions for Coach? I see you, Sam. Go ahead. Coach, so as, an, as a former attacking midfielder yourself, you've obviously been coaching over Stephanie this season, and she's been amazing, you know, leading the team in scores and assists, leading the conference, I should say. Um, is there anything you imparted personally to her, or what, what has impressed? I won't, I won't give away everything. I won't, you never know who's listening. I won't give away everything. But I, I do – one thing I'll say about Steffi is she's all in, and, you know – um, we, we spent, you know, our last question in Zoom, we spent a lot of time taking advantage of watching film um, this summer, you know, because we were allowed to. And I think that actually opened up, you know, being able to study the game a little bit more than what sometimes we're normally allowed to on a normal week in season. Um, so I think studying the game and understanding, you know, what she's capable of doing, you know, and, and, and allowing her and giving her the support of, of obviously seeing the game at a different perspective sometimes too. But She's all in. Um, there's a couple of things that we tweaked, I think. And, and the one thing I'll always say, we, we tease her because we always say she's not listening, but she listens. You know, she listens when she's being coached and she listens in meetings. And after every Zoom, I always ask her questions and she knows those answers. So she's definitely listening. She's tuned in. Um, I think also being a senior, she's been through it. She's the most experienced out there. Um, and there's no stopping her right now. But we're every day, though, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing her to make sure that she's still training the things that she needs to get better at, but also the reasons why she's got to keep doing what she is doing. Kevin, we'll go back to you. Coach, these final two games of the regular season, uh, you know, obviously with teams at the top of the league, if you win them both, you, you know, can control your, your outcome where you're going to finish, obviously. In the past, you've had great leadership. Obviously, this program is steeped in those kind of games. They're depending on some new players to do that. Is that something that they have to go through and experience once or twice before they're really comfortable? Or are there players that are just built for that, for these kind of situations? I think you get a little bit of both. Um, you know, I, I definitely think there's players that can kind of seep right into it, you know, and, and understand their role right away. Um, I do think sometimes it does take a little bit of, you know, kind of learning their part in it um, with their team. But I think our team is very open minded. Um, I think being a captain or not being a captain, I think um, being a senior or a freshman, you know, our team has always been, you know, very open minded to um, listening to each other. Um, at the same time, taking each other's roles on the field and off the field and putting it together. You know, so if we have somebody that can step up that leads as a freshman versus you know, somebody who has experience and might be a little bit more quiet, you know, we're in this together. We're on the same road and same journey, ultimately. Um, so for us, I think we do have a good balance of both. Um, but I think the team is also um, being open-minded, I think, allows us to be a little bit more understanding to each other. Um, and so I think that builds the relationships on the field to develop that confidence moving forward. And I think right now being you know, going into our last two games, our team is now finally starting to figure each other out even more, um, you know, and that kind of develops people coming out of their shells and then other people probably taking over that might be a little bit stronger too of a personality on the field. Adam Zundel, you're next. Thanks. How important was it to get the, uh, the shutout having played the well defensively um, for a while, but not getting that 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 clean sheet uh, Huge. For, since since the first one. Just about the team's mindset, how they feel about that. I love that, right? I mean, I, I think we've been trusting that all along, you know. And for us, you know, we've come to games where sometimes it was just that one little minor factor that you know maybe cost us a goal. And every day we train that and remember that and try to eliminate those same mistakes. Um, I think mentally, mentally and emotionally, I think that's. You know, the kids now know finishing a 90-minute game and what that takes. You know, sometimes it's, you know, you could be up by two. Sometimes a 2 nothing lead could be the worst lead in soccer, you know. So it just takes sometimes one of that other, just one goal for that momentum to kick back up. But no matter what it is, I think finishing a 90-minute intense, hard, physical soccer game is something that they needed to just kind of get a little taste for. Um, and now, obviously, gaining that experience, getting it later into our season, hopefully we can keep that same mentality and emotion going into the next game. 